Hey, everybody, we're going to start the webinar and uh, we'll give it about a couple more minutes, but we figured it's a chance uh, for everybody to, to speak, ask us any questions. This is Khaled Saleh. Uh, I'm the CEO of Invest, and we have Stefan Spencer with us as well. Uh, Stefan, like, you know, so, ma so many different titles, by the way, and uh, I call him the SEO guru. So uh, how are you doing, Stefan? <laughs> you are. <Doing> great. <laughs> In my great. book, like, you know, when I have questions, I come to you. So. Oh, thank you. Um, and, and by the way, if you guys want to uh, let us know where in the world you are and what the weather's like outside, that'd be great. Uh, just uh, type into the into the Q and A box uh, where you are in the world and what the weather's like. I'm in beautiful Santa Monica, and it's a little overcast, but uh, I can't complain. I mean, it's usually perfect weather year round. And yeah. you, Khaled, are in an amazing part of the world right now. Where are you? I am in Cancun, Mexico. How about that? Uh, with the 83 degree weather, um, coming from having snow last week in Detroit, Michigan. You know, this is this is my first vacation in almost two years. I'm loving it. And uh, my my three year old woke up today. He said, "You know what, Dad? I think we should stay here." You know, I'm like, "Yes, I would love to." <laughs> he's like, he's like, he loves the hotel room. You know, he loves the weather. He's like, "We well, should live here." So, yeah. Well, going to school in a hotel room might pose a problem. But, you know, other than that, <laughs> there you go. There you go. So are people, uh, I see people asking, are joining or, us. Uh, yeah. And an answering as well. There are in the world. And yeah. so let's read off some of those answers. Yeah. Let's see. Can you see the answers? Can you see the questions? Uh, by the way, Stefan, let's see. I'm trying to, I'm did, did I ever tell you, by the way, I used to be the last project before I started invest was go to meeting, go to webinar. I used to be their software architect. I did not so, know that. Uh, oh, yes. I mean, that's the reason I have an affinity to the software. I'm like, yes. <laughs> uh, now, now, that was like, you no, know, 13 years ago. But it's funny. And I'm sure they've gone through. I mean, you know how it is. You go through iterations. But it still looks the same, by the way, as it yeah. 13 years ago. So. Well, that's why I switched to Zoom. Because <laughs> <laughs> it still looks the same. Where's the uh, innovation? Yeah. Well, you know what happened is you left. The mm, there you stopped. go. There you go. There you go. It, it, it's, it's, it's interesting because, yeah, I mean, companies sometimes get stuck. And every year, like on renewal, I think about, like, you know, I need to switch from GoToWebinar to, like, you know, Zoom or something else. And I read the reviews and I'm like, you know, what, this is all, it's almost like, you know, all the same, which is a challenge, by the way, online companies have that, you know, I mean, they, they, they think of themselves as different, but they're really to, in the eye of the consumer in this case, they all look the same. So, yeah. Well, wow. should we? Start. I think, uh, I think we're ready to start. So let me right. start the, <clears throat> and I'm assuming everybody can see my screen. Very good. So uh, hello everyone. Thank you for joining a new webinar uh, by Invest. Uh, today we have uh, an absolutely uh, awesome and amazing uh, speaker. I've heard him talk and speak for the last uh, 12 years or, or so since I've started. Uh, I've started Invest. Uh, we have Stefan Spencer who is an SEO genius, an SEO uh, expert, an SEO guru, and I, I rarely, rarely use uh, use this word. Um, he's been um, in the uh, web development, web design, SEO uh, now for oh man, like I don't want to date you, Stefan, but over you know, probably what we're talking about, like in you know, thirty years almost. <laughs> Uh, 29 years yeah uh, okay yeah I, I, I rounded it up but I'm like oh my god like you know I, I, uh, so yeah I mean like but just that shows you like when somebody has been in the industry for so long he just knows so much um, uh, net, net concepts is a company I knew about like you know for for a long time um, and uh, what was cool about it, it had two offices one in the US one in New Zealand which is a really really cool place to have an office in I'm not sure about the travel back and forth uh, then it got acquired by in 2010, and since then I think Stefan has been just kind of uh, picks and chooses like you know uh, good clients uh, to to work with. Speaks at just a ton of conferences. I just asked him like you know which conference, and maybe he can he can share that with us. Uh, he authored uh, three uh, three books um, uh, on on search engine uh, optimization. Has uh, two amazing podcasts the optimized uh, geek and marketing speak both are really uh, just highly recommended um, I can just spend like you know, the whole webinar talking about Stefan and he's a really <laughs> dear friend so with that let me let me turn it to, uh, to Stefan Stefan thank you for joining us I know you're it's a bit early and your schedule is, is always uh, busy so we I appreciate you uh, taking the time to, to join us well I appreciate you uh, 
uh, having me on and and uh, letting me speak to your community. So let me uh, uh, share my screen here and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so let me know if you can see my screen. I can, I can see your screen, yep. Perfect, okay. So uh, we're gonna go through the top seven SEO mistakes that you need to avoid and pretty much every site suffers from most, if not all of these. So let's see if your site suffers through them as well. Now, um, I've been doing this a long time, as Khaled has said, a uh, very, very long time. Uh, worked with some very large brands uh, over the years. And um, I do wanna give a, a, an additional little plug to the two podcasts. It's like a mini, education, many university level education in SEO and online marketing to subscribe and listen to the Marketing Speak podcast. Khaled has been a guest on that show. Uh, so has Seth Godin and Dan Kennedy, Jay Abraham, some of the marketing legends of our time, and also some of the most um, skilled SEOs, paid search, uh, paid search people, um, uh, Facebook ads uh, folks, like top, top people. The Optimized Geek is now rebranded to Get Yourself Optimized. Uh, ah, so I didn't know that. Yep, okay. Uh, that's as of the first of the year. So okay. uh, that podcast is not an SEO podcast, even though it might sound like it. It is <laughs> a biohacking, life hacking, productivity, personal development podcast. So if you want to up level your life, your business, your peer group, your career, uh, your uh, partner intimacy, pretty much anything is fair game if it makes you a better person. So that's my Get Yourself Optimized podcast. Now, I, I do have three books, as uh, Khaled uh, alluded to. The one I'm most famous for is The Art of SEO, now in its third edition. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, it's um, a little bit of a, a not a light read <laughs> let's just put it that way it's a thousand <laughs> pages so uh, yes it is used as a textbook in, in some universities uh, social e-commerce is just like it sounds all about social media to drive online sales and then google power search is not really an seo book but seos use it it's all about how to be a power user of google how to find anything like confidential business plans of your competitors, uh, forced to research reports that normally cost thousands of dollars. They're all at your fingertips with the right kind of Google search. Unbelievably, I've even found credit card number files with expiration <laughs> dates and no, that's not in the book. <laughs> so I have a question for you guys. What's the hardest part about driving traffic to your site right now? Where are you getting the most stuck? What's your biggest challenge? If you could type into the Q and A box, uh, and then Khaled can uh, yeah. read those aloud. That would be fantastic. So take just a moment here, uh, and th this should go without saying, but please, if you are doing other things like email or texting or anything like that, please put those things away because I want you to get the maximum value from this webinar, and that means giving me 100% attention, and I'll deliver 100% uh, to you as well. So uh, please just uh, take a moment, type into the Q&A box. The hardest part about driving traffic right now is whatever. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So can't figure out the rules <laughs> anymore. Yeah, it's so, always changing. Uh, it's, just, it's always changing. I guess that's like, you know, uh, that's a good and a bad uh, a bad thing at the same, uh, yes. at the same I look time. forward to the changes because it's like it keeps you uh, like on the cutting edge and a step ahead of your competitors. If if you embrace change, you're bulletproof. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, like, you know, what, what works. Um, you Needing know, to know what works. Uh, yeah, what focus. Works. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, those are kind of the, the, the main things, you know, I mean, yeah. Okay, the main main uh, yeah. ideas here. Okay, cool. So thank you for those of you who uh, chimed in on that. Um, so the good news is there are simple things that you can do to fix your SEO. You just don't know what they are. You don't know what you don't know. And that's always a problem. In fact, developers have this problem, designers who are designing your layouts and so forth, they don't understand the implications of what they're doing uh, can hurt your SEO. 
inadvertently. Uh, the folks who are writing copy, the merchandisers, they don't understand which words are the right words to incorporate and which ones are the wrong words. So, but there are some simple technical fixes, in fact, that you don't have to be uh, a rocket scientist to, uh, or a developer or a systems administrator to understand that these things are broken on your site. And if you don't have the tools to fix it yourself, you can just ask your IT team to make these, uh, these changes. So we're gonna go through uh, these in the seven uh, big mistakes. Uh, but I just want to reiterate that you're in good hands here. I've been doing this for a long time. I've worked with some of the biggest brands in the world, Chanel, Volvo, Sony, Zappos, CNBC, uh, Bloomberg Business Week, Quicksilver. Um, it just, I, I could go on and on. And I've earned them many, many millions, tens of millions of dollars more than that, I'm sure I haven't added it up. I don't think I could, but the, uh, the the point here is that you're in good hands. These things work and they've worked for many really big clients. So they'll work for you. Now, Stefan, let me ask and you I a question because I, I always hear this. Uh, so what works for big clients? Do you think it will also work for, for the smaller uh, clients? Uh, yes, medium for to small? sure. For yes. sure, because if you have an issue that is creating, let's say, duplicate content on your site, or you have thin content that you didn't mean to get indexed, but it is, it doesn't matter if you're one of the biggest sites in the world or you are a small site. In fact, it can be even more beneficial for a smaller site and a smaller company, because it seems like the bigger brands get away with a lot more in Google. They're forgiven for mistakes and faux pas and misconfigurations uh, a lot more by the Google algorithm. So uh, yes, yeah, so this is stuff that's universally applicable. And I think the, the smaller sites even have more to, to gain percentage wise in terms of uh, traffic increases. Yeah, so I can only fix so many sites. I can do only so many SEO audits. And as Khaled alluded to, I'm uh, selective on who I take on as clients since I sold uh, net concepts and created a, a smaller consultancy. I, I only work with a handful of clients at a time. So I want to teach you how to apply some of these uh, ideas and, tr and strategies on your own. And like I said, just ask your IT department to make these changes and not have to involve uh, uh, an agency or an SEO team uh, to make these fixes. They're almost like do it yourself type opportunities, DIY. Now the the key kind of fundamental to uh, good SEO is having the foundation right. Your um, your underlying foundation is what you build upon, like a house. You want to have a, a, a solid foundation and not a shaky one because you know that could be really bad, especially if an earthquake comes or whatever. So we want to have a very solid foundation and it starts with technical SEO, getting the configuration right of all the different things from hreflang tags, canonical tags, uh, schema.org markup, uh, redirects, all of it, right? And there's a lot of nuance to this. So with that said, I'm gonna give you some really straightforward um, tips and tricks that will help you to elevate your rankings and your traffic. And we're gonna start with number one, that your keyword targeting is off. You just didn't know it yet. You're not identifying question-based keywords. You're not targeting featured snippets. Maybe you're still using the Google Keyword Planner as your primary keyword research tool, heaven forbid. You know, these are big faux pas, big mistakes, and I'll explain why. So oftentimes we're targeting the wrong keywords and it's not because of um, ignorance, well maybe it is, but it's also because of um, uh, just business uh, ideals or, or rules that prevent us from uh, doing our, our best um, work and having our, our our best uh, foot forward. So a great example of that is Westpac Bank, a big bank in Australasia uh, was a client and their legal department 
uh, told them they could not use the term mortgage anywhere on their website, which is a really bad idea, by the way. As you can see from this um, uh, keyword popularity uh, graph, it does not look like home loans are searched on hardly at all in comparison to mortgage. It's just a night and day difference, right? So they had to use the term home loan everywhere because apparently a mortgage is a legal instrument and Westpac doesn't offer that. So uh, that the legal department, also known as the business prevention department, uh, got in the way of them ranking for the term mortgage, which is where all the traffic was. So that was a bad idea. Uh, another fun example here, um, a department store chain in the US uh, was also a client, uh, begins with a K, ends with an S. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, it, they were very focused on a keyword that I thought was kind of silly, uh, kitchen electrics. I hadn't even heard that term before, but apparently that's an industry term. Uh, it refers to small kitchen appliances that are on the countertop, usually like food processors, blenders, toasters, etc. Well, they wanted to rank very highly for that keyword, and I'm trying to convince them that, no, this is actually not a good use of your time and focus because nobody's searching for that keyword perhaps only the CEO, but if um, the CEO is searching, you don't want to take a chance that you lose your job because um, you're not ranking for that uh, unimportant keyword. So sometimes the education needs to go all the way to the top of the company in order for you to not lose your job. But this is uh, another fun example of uh, targeting the wrong keywords. Now, the right keywords can be ones where it's not entirely intuitive. It's not exactly your target market. Let's say that you're selling baby furniture online, for example, bassinets and cribs and so forth. And uh, you start typing in the word baby into Google and you get these suggestions back, autocomplete suggestions. That's called Google Suggest. And one of the first keywords that comes up as a recommendation is baby names. And you might think, well, that's interesting, but I don't sell baby names. I'm, how am I going to make money off of baby names? <laughs> Right. But if you think about where people are, the expectant parents are your target market, where they are in the buyer journey before they start thinking about the baby's room and how to outfit it with all the right furniture and and toys and everything. They're thinking about what? The baby's name. Exactly. Right. So they come back from the ultrasound <clears throat> and find out it's a boy or a girl. And they hop onto Google and they search for baby names, not baby furniture. That's too soon for it's too soon for that. Baby names. So if you can offer a lot of value in terms of baby names, like uh, uh, helpful tools or or idea generators or um, baby name meanings or something that is a little more uh, original and different from everything else that's out there, so that you kind of stand apart you could bring in a lot of traffic. And this is exactly the traffic you want. Who, who else is searching for baby names? It's only expectant parents. So there's an example of thinking kind of laterally, a little bit outside the box and earlier in the buyer journey. All right, so let's move on. I, I, I like, I like that, that a lot because uh, lots of times we exclude some, some ideas, but you just, I love the way how you linked it together. It's like, hey, they are in your like you know buyer journey and maybe a bit earlier and that's really where you want to target them you want to get them and offer them like yeah. you said something unique so i i love that yeah and and uh, to connect the dots even further imagine offering the essential nesting checklist over on the uh -huh. over on the side or in a pop up saying you know download this free uh, comprehensive tool that will help you to outfit your baby's room with all the right things, the furniture, should you get wood or should you get metal, should, you, should it be painted, should it, it, the crib have a mobile above it, and all these sorts of things that you can guide them with um, your own ideas and, and recommendations. In other words, you're influencing their buying criteria. Yeah. That's, Very that's cool. Awesome. All right. So let's move on to number two, which is <laughs> your content is weak. Ouch, that hurts. <laughs> and what do, I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, you're not appealing to the linkerati. That's the, uh, that's like the digerati or, or kind of the illuminati of the uh, online world. Who does Google think is important, trusted, and authoritative? That's who we need to target with our content marketing campaigns. And if we're creating content that's only valuable or useful to your customer base, you've missed out. You've created something that's not link worthy. Um, if you have duplicate content, which I alluded to uh, very briefly 
earlier. You know, that's uh, the bane of the SEO uh, person's existence is having content replicated on their site multiple places or on other sites as well. So you're competing with your own content over and over again, or you're using uh, your uh, manufacturer's content and not tweaking it or paraphrasing it or adding additional value. And so inadvertently you're competing with all the other retailers out there that carry the same uh, products from the same merchandise or same um, uh, manufacturers. Thin content, that's where the content is uh, not meaty, it maybe is just a little bit of text and some images and that doesn't look good or um, maybe it's zero search results pages or, or error pages showing up in the search results. That sort of stuff is not going to be helpful for you and for your SEO. Uh, ad heavy pages can get you in trouble. Walls of text that are not easy to read create uh, a lot of uh, bounces. So the bounce rate is high and thus the dwell time is low. So these are all issues. Um, now to get you thinking a little outside of the box, this is kind of fun. Um, this is a company that is very tiny. Uh, Lifeinsure.com is an insurance brokerage with I think fewer than a dozen employees, at least last I heard. Uh, and this article was not even linked to from anywhere on their site. It was not published on their blog or anything. It was essentially an orphan page, but then their SEO consultant, somebody I know, a friend of mine uh, in the industry, uh, created this edgy article and then submitted it to the Reddit of the day, which was Dig um, back then. Not a relevant site anymore, but <laughs> Reddit is certainly super uh, popular. It's kind of the front page of the internet. So imagine this getting to the front page of Reddit. Well, that's essentially what happened. And they got tons of links to this uh, article, which lifted the rankings. Not It's the rising tide that lifts all boats. Every page benefited. Consequently, they ranked on page one in Google and Bing and Yahoo, of course, too, uh, for life insurance. For life insurance, and not this article, it was their homepage, and they stayed there for years because of this one article, which is really kind of creepy, and I'm not going to read any of the bullets on here, but um, they created something that was not meant for customers at all. So I'm just being extreme here. I'm not saying that you have to uh, go completely off brand and do something this edgy but I'm just showing you an example of thinking outside the, the lines and what it can get you. I mean, they were right there on page one with Geico, MetLife, State Farm, and they were a 12-person company. Crazy, And, right? and what's, what, what's amazing is, I mean, these companies, each brand that you mentioned is humongous, humongous SEO, humongous digital marketing budget, humongous everything. And here's one article that's just like, okay, well, just the right targeting, smart, edgy, and, and okay, we'll beat them all. Yeah, pretty wild. Okay, so here's another uh, example. Build Direct uh, does have an e-commerce site where uh, you can buy home uh, renovation uh, supplies, and uh, they did some edgy articles like this one, Redneck Home Remodels, that got them <laughs> a lot of uh, play on social media. But the social media uh, uh, visibility is a means to an end. Because the social links and, and visibility doesn't directly equate to higher rankings. It's only when those people you're reaching through social media include the linkerati and they're linking to you. And they that's exactly what happened. And they got a lot of links from this uh, edgy article about redneck home remodels. There were some funny uh, pictures, which I'm not going to scroll down through and show you. But uh, Google it if you're interested. Okay, number three in the big mistakes is you have unnatural linking patterns. And again, you don't know it. You don't know what you don't know about this. And uh, and it's toxic links. Uh, it's... it's um, not enough diversity in your link profile. Uh, the way to check, the best way to check if you have toxic links is a tool called Link Detox. It's fantastic. And um, then you'll get a score back, a Link Detox score. It's from a tool set, a company called linkresearchtools.com. And uh, they have several dozen different tools in their tool set, Link Detox being one of them. You should be doing a, a, a detox check at least quarterly because you might be the unwitting victim of a negative SEO attack. Yes, negative SEO, that's a thing. Your competitors, your affiliates, uh, rogue affiliates, uh, people who just don't like you can target you 
And the way that they target you and, and hurt your rankings in Google is by buying or building low quality links to your site as if they were you. And Google doesn't know that it's not you. Especially if you've done stuff that was a little sketchy in the past ever, you know, and then that looks like you, that's on your rap sheet that looks like you're more inclined to do something like this, to buy low quality links. Then for a hundred bucks, they can really sully your reputation in the eyes of Google. So you have to be on top of this sort of stuff. Um, and, and here's a power tip is to find power users that will help you. The, the Linkerati can be partnered with, right? So uh, I have a whole article on that in, in search engine land called the social media underground. An old article, but a goodie. It's still valid and the ideas in there. And here's a, just a, an example of that in action. Uh, OvernightPrints.com was a client of mine where um, I came up with this idea for a contest called the Business Cards for Life contest. In actuality, the prize was not that impressive because it's a thousand business cards a year for up to 20 years. So that's like pocket change. Um, I think I have enough money in my wallet to cover that, right? So, but the, the thing that made the difference was finding a power user as uh, a, a integral component to the campaign. In this case, it was Jeremy Shoemaker, AKA Shoe Money, a famous internet marketer who, um, um, yeah, he's got a big following and uh, that's him right here with the winning entry of the contest. It looks like a, a chip card back uh, then it was much more kind of cutting edge to have a business card that looked like a chip card and you flip it over and it's got his signature and a little white stripe. It was really clever. Um, so my client went from nowhere for the term business cards to number two within about six months because of this campaign. And that's it. Just this campaign. Isn't that amazing? So that is an example of how you can think outside the box, create some content that is really compelling, that is remarkable, that's worthy of people linking to you. And then you target the Linkerati. And in fact, you can partner with them and get some really big rewards. Okay, so uh, we're gonna power through these next uh, few here uh, quickly. So you're not crawling your site, that's number four. And you might be crawling your site you know, uh, occasionally, but you're not doing it regularly enough, or you might be using uh, a tool that's not really the best in class tool. So uh, one example of a best in class tool for crawling your site from an SEO standpoint is Write, R-Y-T-E, formerly known as onpage.org. That tool is awesome. Um, also deep crawl is fantastic as well. On crawl is another one that's really good. Um, and these are hosted in the cloud. Their software is a service, so they're not gonna um, use up all your bandwidth. They're not gonna uh, take up all your computing power on your laptop. Uh, while you're trying to also do email. Screaming Frog is a, a, a great uh, crawling tool that's much more um, lower budget, but it does run on your desktop computer and it does take up your bandwidth. So it depends on uh, what your needs are, but use a tool that crawls your site on a regular basis. Um, it's really important. And that'll find for you all sorts of issues with missing uh, title tags or overly long title tags or the wrong kind of redirects in place or 404 errors, 503 errors, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so uh, number five is you're not optimizing your page speed. And what I mean by that is uh, that your load time is um, unacceptably uh, slow. And uh, Google puts this into the um, weighing criteria and the factors that it uses to determine where you should rank, and especially pertinent for mobile users, so people doing mobile search, uh, you're much more susceptible to getting downgraded in, in the rankings because you have a slow loading website. There are lots of tools that will help you uh, ascertain if you have a problem with uh, slow loading web pages. Of course, PageSpeed Insights is a free tool from Google that uh, you should all check your site. There's also the testmysite.thinkwithgoogle.com uh, tool, which is actually powered by um, uh, webpagetest.org, but it's a great little tool, uh, also free. And uh, webpagetest.org is a free tool you could use. Uh, gtmetrics.com is a, another great free tool you can use. Uh, Lighthouse is a Chrome extension, also free. These are all 
excellent and will give you lots of recommendations to make tweaks to lower your uh, your load time. Okay, number six is using the wrong kinds of redirects, and this might seem uh, like it's old school information here, but back in the day, 301s and 302s were um, uh, sometimes misused from an SEO standpoint, and always 301s were the only correct kind of redirect from an SEO standpoint. Well, times have changed, and uh, just to give you something that uh, you, might want to mull over is uh, Christoph Kemper, who's the founder of linkresearchtools.com and also a, a link uh, expert. He was on my podcast. Uh, that episode is like, uh, I think about a year ago. I highly recommend you listen to that episode. And we talked about many different things, but one of them was redirects. And he did a study where he found that 302 redirects actually had a, a more substantial rankings impact from an SEO standpoint over the long term than 301s, which is very wow. counterintuitive. Yeah. So Google came on record to say that 302s are also pace, uh, passing page rank now. They're also uh, good for SEO, not just 301s. So you'll f find that in uh, like uh, uh, Gary Eish's uh, uh, tweets from a while back. So 302s are not a bad thing from an SEO standpoint, unless you're trying to um, remove search results from Google and then 302s are a problem because 301s, um, they collapse the, the search results into just the, the destination URL showing up in the search results. But if that's not an issue for you, then you might want to experiment with 302s. And then the last one, I know we're, uh, uh, we're running up on time here, is that your site is not fully migrated to HTTPS and you didn't know it. And you might think, what? No, we did that two years ago, we migrated. Problem is you didn't know how to search on Google to find the HTTP URLs that are still indexed. So uh, you add an in URL colon HTTP to your search query for like site colon yourdomain.com and that will show all these HTTP URLs. And there's a great article on Wired about how Wired migrated to HTTPS and they made all these mistakes and they're very savvy and sophisticated uh, technically and they still made mistakes. So if Wired makes mistakes with a migration uh, that is seemingly simple from HTTP to HTTPS, you probably did too and you just didn't know it. Like you probably redirected your XML sitemap from the old HTTP to the new HTTPS without keeping an HTTP version alive, which showed Googlebot all the redirects in place and you you yanked the rug from under Googlebot from discovering all those 301 redirects. So that's an example of how you probably had um, not quite hit the mark with the uh, the migration process. So I don't know why you're here if you are here because um, you know you're trying to get more traffic or your the traffic you're getting from Google isn't high quality enough. It's not converting as well as paid search or whatever the issues are. Your competitors are coming in and just crushing you or you had a big drop off in traffic from Google recently. I don't know. But usually what happens is that people get kind of decision fatigue and uh, they, they don't know what to do next, especially if they don't have all the information and they're used to having all the information. And there's, you know, SEO is kind of a black box. So the big question is what's the next step for you? So now you've got some ideas of some things that you could fix or at least uh, address potentially and, and look into, but what's the very next step? What's the thing that's gonna get you the big bang for your buck? Um, so, you know, I, I always believe in taking the road that's been traveled before and, and trusting the experts who have traveled that road before rather than trying to reinvent the wheel all the time. Um, so here's some people who, uh, trust me and my advice like Tony Robbins and Taki Moore and, um, uh, Steve Spangler, who's in the National Speaker Association Hall of Fame, uh, an Emmy Award winner. Um, the 
uh, SEO lead at Zappos, all saying that uh, I know my stuff. And so here's a really cool offer that I wanted to share with you because, you know, why not? I'm, I'm going to uh, give all of you a free 10 minute critique. So we'll pull up your websites and uh, we'll uh, go through different technical content or, or linking issues uh, in those 10 minutes. So you'll all get that for free. If you would uh, prefer though, because you know 10 minutes isn't a lot of time, I'll do a 60 minute a deeper dive critique and I'll send you the recording and you'll be able to share that with your tech team, with your merchandising team, et cetera, so that you can apply my recommendations and I'll do that for 497, which I think is an incredible offer. Uh, so I'll also uh, throw in there uh, an SEO critique worksheet that if you wanna fill it out, which I highly recommend, and you send it to me before our call if, for the 60 minute call, I will give you feedback on that worksheet. So it's gonna walk you through a bunch of things that you need to think about for your SEO roadmap. And uh, I'll, I'll weigh in with my input on that as well. So that's a pretty darn good offer. All of you should take me up on the 10 minute offer. I mean, that's a no brainer, but if you want the deeper dive, the 60 minutes, um, 497, uh, this is only the second time I've ever offered this. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's it's a no-brainer. I, I would charge at least one uh, thousand one hundred ninety-seven for it, uh, at least. But um, you guys are. Uh, um, I was going to say, Stefan. So uh, I, I know I know some of my clients who like you know paid you a lot more than that for the sixty minutes. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> definitely, not. we're talking about yeah. thousands of dollars, by the way. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Or, or tens of thousands. <laughs> right. Yeah. So and. To make it even more uh, uh, of a no-brainer, I'm going to reverse the risk here and uh, make the risk sit all on me. If you feel like it wasn't mass massive value for you, that 60-minute uh, critique, and if I don't deliver at least three SEO opportunities you didn't already know about, uh, then I'll give you your money back. Wow. <laughs> so wow. here you go. Uh, definitely, at a minimum, do the 10-minute analysis with me. Um, but you know, the 60 minute one will be much, much higher value, of course. And these are not sales calls, so I'm not going to snooker you into a, a pitch or anything. So stephanspencer.as.me uh, slash analysis for the 10 minute one and stephanspencer.com slash SEO dash critique for the 60 minute one. And uh, I'll keep that on the screen for a little bit. And we can do a few questions if you guys would like. Um, I don't know awesome, if, uh... awesome. Well, no, I, I truly appreciate you taking the time. Uh, incredible. I mean, incredible content. Although, like, you know, I, I follow the industry. I'm by no means like, and I just like, you know, just learn enough to like, you know, make sure that uh, our SEO uh, is running smoothly. But the, the, the offers are absolutely uh, incredible. So, well, I probably, you should sign up for a 10 minute analysis. Oh, oh, no, no, I'm gonna do the 60, <laughs> the, the 60 minutes. <laughs> no, nice I, I, you know what? I'm, uh, uh, 60 minutes with you. Uh, you know, I mean. Like, you know, over the years, like, you know, whenever I ask you a question, you're always like, you know, give me like, you know, these tips. And it's like usually over two, three minutes, 60 minutes with you is just a no brainer. You know, uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that pay for itself. It's like, because if you really get the chance to speak to an SEO expert um, and they know their their stuff and definitely on, on top of that list, you know, just one or two things can make really night and day difference in, in a business, in an online business. Really, it really does. And, you know, I, I've seen it with my clients. I've seen it with, with us. Um, you know, I've seen like, you know, I mean, at some point our site used to get 200,000 visitors uh, a month. We dropped uh, because of mistakes I've done uh, about 10 years ago. We dropped to a thousand visitors a month from 200,000 to a thousand. And now we're, we're back up to about 60 or 70. So I've seen the power of SEO where like, you know, it makes a business, destroys a business and, and talking to just like, you know, 60 minutes with you, that that's just absolutely incredible. Uh, let, let me ask you a couple of questions, uh, Stefan, and I know we're, we're about sure. to run out of time. Uh, we'll definitely, I want to put links to lots of the tools that you've mentioned. So maybe you can just shoot each other some emails, put, put them in the, in the webinar notes. Uh, but uh, one of the things that you mentioned about duplicate content, and especially for retailers, and that's most of our webinar attendees come, kind of come from the e-commerce background, you know, they, they take the manufacturer, uh, product description, dump it on their site, and, and they're done. 
how do right. you recommend they handle that? Uh, because yes, that is duplicate content to a good extent. You're right, right. So what typically is done to uh, ameliorate the situation is adding some additional content. But then if that additional content is only a couple of paragraphs or something, then the five or six or eight paragraphs that you've added from the manufacturer that is duplicate content far uh, outweighs the couple of paragraphs you added. So I recommend kind of starting over with a complete paraphrase or rewrite of the, the product copy. Uh, and if you can make it remarkable and highly valuable, remarkable as in worthy of remark, what you write could be more than just a, a paraphrase. It could be entertaining. It could be educational. It could be uh, thought provoking or uh, you know, well considered. And just for an example of remarkable product content, I would point you to a site called VAT19. VAT19, V-A-T-19.com. They have the most innovative, clever, entertaining, awesome uh, product descriptions you'll ever find. They're awesome. awesome. And uh, also, if you want to see an example of the most amazing, innovative product videos as well, mm -hmm. they crush it. They've gotten over 3 billion with a wow. B views on YouTube for product videos. That's awesome. That is awesome. Uh, so second, uh, second uh, question. Um, just like in a sense, like in a, we, we always come on on projects and we work we work together. But I'm always interested in your your view. CRO, SEO. How does that work? How does that work together? Um, I, I know right. we're impacted tremendously by the work that uh, like you know uh, SEOs can do. Can it can really make our life tremendously easier and sometimes really hard. But I want to hear your your view. Yeah. So and and the best of all worlds, the two things dovetail nicely and work together and enhance each other. That doesn't always work. Um, you might get uh, somebody saying one thing on, on one side of the uh, of the fence, like, okay, well, let's take content away because it's hurting our conversion rate and then that's gonna hurt your SEO or we gotta add more keyword rich copy to the top of the page and that's gonna push the, the, com uh, the compelling call to action further down the page and thus hurt the, uh, the conversion rate. So ideally you're working with a team that plays nice together and they understand that one plus one can equal three and the enhancements that are recommended by the, the, the partnership, the, the two sides working together for the same aim, which is more high quality traffic that converts the recommendations have uh, uh, they've kind of sussed out what works and what doesn't work uh, from both sides of the fence, and the recommendations are thus uh, coordinated and effective for both sides. Definitely, and and you know that's what I always tell our team because sometimes they complain. I always tell them, remember, without having quality traffic, we're not going to even talk about conversion. Because if there's no visitors, there's no eyeballs. It's like, okay, so what are you going to do? You can have, you know, a site that is just really architected to convert, but if you're not getting the traffic, then it's useless. And at the same time, you want to make sure that you're getting that really high quality traffic because I've also seen like, you know, uh, some SEOs that come in and drive lots of traffic and I'm like, oh, it's really not targeted. It's not well thought. It does not relate to anything that, that the site does, uh, you know, and it's just, Actually, not the CEOs. I would have to say, like, you know, probably more with social media people who are working mm -hmm. in the social media, and it doesn't, it doesn't really, it doesn't really help. Um, with that, I think we've passed the time. Um, we're going to put uh, links to uh, lots of the tools that you've uh, mentioned in in the webinar notes. Uh, the, the offer is just absolutely amazing. So I'm going to actually include this offer also to the people who registered, uh, so they'll get an opportunity to see to see that. Uh, really appreciate you taking the time, uh, Stefan. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. The webinar recording will be up on our YouTube channel uh, this coming uh, Monday and uh, we'll have our next webinar announced uh, by then. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending again, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye.